Now let's get the view from Sally Ord, interest rate strategist at JP Morgan, and Dr. Stephen Nash from Fig Securities. Stephen, good morning. If we can start with you first, just a wrap, if you could, on uh, the response in Treasury markets overnight to this call from S&P. Well, in initially, uh, long yields uh, rose a few basis points. I think three or four basis points, and then rallied with the weakness in equity markets. So I think um, basically the uh, the problems with the deficit are really built into the bond market. The bond market's basically all over this problem already. Um, so th I think the problem for the US will be sorting out this problem with the, the debt ceiling and then uh, doing a medium term budget agreement. And I think the important point is that uh, I think bond yields have already risen as a result of this. I think a resolution would, would uh, result in some sort of fall in bond yields, I would have thought. So fundamentally, Sally, if they do fall, where is the attraction for investors? Why is this potentially a good story? If yeah, you good hold US debt. Yeah, good morning, Carlson. I mean, I think the, the general idea here is that uh, you know what what S and P have really done is fire a little bit of a, a warning shot across the the bows in the U.S. and pretty much put the politicians on notice and said, look, you know, you, you've got two years. Um, and I think Stephen's exactly right. It wasn't really any surprise to anyone that you know this was an issue. And there've been some pretty well respected commentators who've been making you know quite a big deal a, about the U.S. fiscal situation and what that means for Treasury. So, you know, it's been a, a very well talked about story, and I think it's been very much priced into into the market. And I guess the right way to look at it is to say, well. You you know, if, if SNP's warning overnight actually spurs the politicians in Washington into action and we do see some genuine traction on a commitment to, to, to see some fiscal, fiscal consolidation in the US, then that's obviously a good thing for, for US Treasury yields. You know, at the very least, it means, uh, it means less supply near term. Uh, so Sally, just to understand the move overnight a, a bit better though, if, um, markets obviously, as you say, un understand the issues. Um, wh what money was being moved into bond markets? That was risk aversion or was it money just coming out of equities or is there something else? Of course we've got had the sovereign debt concerns out of Europe as well. Uh, was that part of it? Yeah, I think that was that was part of it. And actually, you know what? At the end of the day, you actually saw markets like Germany and, and even Australia actually outperform the U.S. in in bond space overnight. So we actually rallied more than than the U.S. did, and as did the German bond market. So you know, I think there was an element of discernment amongst investors, which was that you know, if there's a risk aversion trade going on and a, a bit of a flight to quality, well, maybe I'm going to be a little bit more picky about which um, you know high quality asset I choose. And you know, clearly something like Australian bonds or maybe German bonds, where the AAA a rating is not remotely under threat from the, the ratings agencies look marginally more attractive than treasuries but you know, look, generally speaking I think it, there was a knee-jerk reaction as Stephen said you got a little bit of a sell-off and then we rallied back in line as people sort of said you know what there's not a lot new in this maybe it could even be positive for treasuries over the medium term and on top of that you know you had equity markets in you know quite significant negative territory and that obviously helped bond yields fall um, as well. Even, uh, are U.S. Treasuries, I mean, they're the traditional safe haven. Are, to, can they still retain that status with, with the outlook warning from, uh, from S&P today? I think um, the, the status of U.S. Treasuries is probably unchanged. Um, the other agencies are being uh, more reticent to make comment at the moment, but if you look at the S&P statement, it was really quite well, uh, quite detailed. Uh, they, they tried to avoid any siding with any of the political parties. Um, I think you know this is just calling for agreement and calling for it uh, faster than it would otherwise occur. I think they're worried about um, this issue, particularly the medium-term budget going past the uh, presidential elections in 2012 and then dragging on to 2013. I mean, they've got to not only have they got to agree, they've got to implement the cuts as well. So there's there's a lot mm. to be done. Uh, Sally, if the U.S. government, both houses don't get their house in order over this one. What chance now of QE3? What need for monetary policy to come in and fill that void? Because if equity markets are discounting the end of QE2 in a weaker economy, and we're seeing that play out with softer prices uh, into the finish now, as we saw overnight, is, is this a signal that maybe the Fed has to do some of the heavy lifting after June the 30th? 
Yeah, Carson, I think there's very little um, appetite for QE3 amongst the FOMC at the moment. I mean, I think you know, the, the interesting thing with the US is that, if anything, maybe the, the sort of first quarter growth numbers have been on the softer side of expectations. And I think part of that story is, you know, JP Morgan rem remained pretty, pretty convinced that there's a fundamental positive story happening for the global economy. But, you know, we've just come up against so many headwinds over the last sort of 12 to 18 months, you know, starting with the, the, the European debt crisis almost a year ago and then more recently, obviously, the events in Japan and then the fact that the oil prices remained elevated for, for, you know, going on sort of four or five months now, which is obviously a drag on global consumption. So you know, the growth numbers probably aren't as good in the US as, as everyone, including ourselves, might have hoped. But I think, you know, people remain convinced that there's enough momentum there and certainly that, that's clear in the labour market numbers that I don't really think anyone's talking about the prospect of QE3 um, in the US. If anything, the way our guys at JP Morgan are reading, they're saying, you know, what if the fiscal consolidation story is actually a little bit stronger than we might have anticipated? then all that really means is that the Fed just does, takes a lot longer to start normalising the Fed funds rate than we might have um, initially expected. So at the moment at JP Morgan, you know, we haven't got the Fed doing anything until uh, the first quarter of 2013 in terms of changes to the Fed funds rate. And I think in an environment where you've got growth, which is, you know, it's OK, but it's not great, um, and you've got fiscal policy that needs to be tightened quite considerably over the next sort of five to ten years, that probably sounds about right for, for US policy, especially when the output gap remains so negative in the US. All right, uh, Stephen Nash, arguably the world might be looking in some pockets uh, a safer place right now, but also there are those that say the European debt situation is entering a new and dangerous phase right now. Uh, what do you make of where Greece finds itself? One of the key, well, one of the first to go with a begging bowl to Europe Europe and now back in frame. Um, well, th this crisis just keeps on rolling on. Um, we've said so much about it. I, I think the, the some in the market are looking for a restructuring of uh, sovereign debt. I think the overriding problem with that is the effect on the banking system. Uh, the banking system in Europe is not exactly healthy at the moment, and I would expect that the authorities will try to avoid that if, if at all possible. So I think that's. Uh, Steady as she goes at the moment. Hopefully, they, uh, the European authorities, can uh, rein in some of this speculation, and uh, we can get uh, the market proceeding along. But uh, you know, we've seen a quite a, a large rise in Spanish yields uh, last night. That's the real. That is the real problem. If Spain, uh, if speculation uh, increases in Spain, yeah, we've got a real problem there. Sally, has that issue been contained though? Is Spain, I think we ask this all the time, but we need to keep checking in, is Spain under control on that front? Well, it's been quite interesting just in the last week or so. I mean, for the last couple of months, you know, we, we saw quite a divergence in the performance of peripheral bond markets. So Spain was actually, and Italy were actually doing OK versus Portugal and Greece, which weren't faring too well, nor Ireland. And just in the last week, that's actually reversed. And so as, you know, Portuguese and Greek and Irish bond yields have, have gone up, so have Spanish and Italian bond yields as well. So you know, that, that's made people a little bit nervous that this contagion story might be back again and, you know, I think people were getting more and more confident that, you know, Spain and Italy were actually going to do okay and get through this um, because of the, the different performance in, in their long-end bond yields, but that, that hasn't been the case in the last week and I think the, the thing that's making people nervous is that, you know, clearly this Greece debt restructuring story um, seems to be gaining a little bit more momentum. People have been chattering about that for the last couple of weeks, but just in the last few days it, the, the sort of volume seems to be turned up on that. That's not going to be a good thing for the economy of Europe or the banking system um, in Europe and I think that's what's making you know, people a little bit nervous about you know, a general contagion story should you know, Greeks decide for whatever reason um, that they want to pursue some sort of voluntary restructuring of their debt. Going to have to leave the conversation there. Could uh, take the whole show, but as you know, there's more in store for viewers. Thank you so much. Sally All from JP Morgan, Dr. Stephen Nash from Fig Securities. Thanks a lot. In Thanks,